In the 16th chapter of Romans, we find Paul's roll call. He addresses 26 friends who happened to be living in Rome. Now, Paul didn't start the church at Rome, <coughs> nor did Peter. <coughs> Acts chapter 2 says that on the day of Pentecost, there were people present who heard Peter preach at Jerusalem. People who were from Rome. And when they went back, they started a church that became so large, the whole Christian world knew about it. So Paul had lots of friends there. Nine of them especially are women friends. The New Testament is the most pro-woman book in the world. Many women associated with Christ and ministered to him. You remember when Mary broke the alabaster box and anointed her Lord, Christ predicted that what she'd done will be told of in the whole world. And now, 2,000 years later, we fulfill that prophecy as we allude to Mary's anointing. So in the New Testament, women are very, very important. The ridiculous attitude to women adopted in some churches in forbidding that they should preach the gospel is not New Testamental. In the seventh verse, it talks about Junius, that's the KJV, but more modern translations have Junior, J-U-N-I-A, a woman's name, and she's called an apostle. We mustn't forbid half the human beings to preach the gospel. Catherine Booth preached it better than her husband, General William Booth. Hannah Whittle Smith, who wrote The Christian Secret, of the happy life that's influenced millions was a great preacher in Europe, in, in England. Many women have glorified their Lord by telling the good news. Forbid them not. The verses that appear to forbid women speaking in, ch in churches are warnings about women arguing and wanting to discuss instead of listening to the preaching of the gospel. There always have been some women like that and some men like that who interrupt the best things by talking too much. The only verses that forbid women are the verses that forbid such wrong behaviour. When you read on in this chapter, Paul talks about the end of the world. He foretells the complete consummation of the prophecy of Genesis 3.15 about the seed of the woman that would destroy the serpent's head. That was fulfilled at Calvary. The serpent remains, but it has a crushed head. We don't have to give way to Satan anymore. Christ defeated him on the cross, but he still remains. And in this closing chapter, Paul tells us the hour is coming when the devil will be absolutely destroyed and with him all who follow him, all who have not responded to the love of God. Martin Luther said, when I think of myself, I don't see how I could ever be saved. But when I think of Christ, I do not see how I could ever be lost. That, dear friend, is my last word to you on this series of Romans, the Gospel in Romans that if you look to Christ, you will live everlastingly. And looking to Christ, you can never be lost. God bless you.